In my last video, we trained an AI to be other AIs on SNES Mario Circuit 3. However, we are back again by popular demand, this time on DS Delfino Square. This should be quite the challenge, as Delfino Square has a lot of narrow streets, tight corners, and is all in all just a trickier track than SNES Mario Circuit 3. However, before we go ahead and start training our new AI, there's been a few notable changes in order to improve from the last version. One of the biggest issues with the last version that many people pointed out was that the AI loved to hop around for no real reason instead of just wheeling which should have been a lot faster. To combat this we've got a few new rewards for our AI but first I'm going to tell you a little about speed in Mario Kart Wii. Using Funky Kong and the Flame Runner, the vehicle we're using in this video, the standard speed is 84 kilometers an hour while just driving or drifting. However, when in a wheelie, this top speed can actually reach up to 97 km an hour, slowly building up the longer you wheelie for. After drifting, if Funky Kong is able to get a mini turbo and then immediately wheelie, it can actually reach speeds as high as 113 km an hour, giving a massive boost in speed. And lastly, if the AI starts to spam hop constantly, the speed will be significantly lowered. Sometimes it can normally be about 70 km an hour, which is a real problem given how much slower it is than just wheeling. So what are we gonna do with all this information about speed? In our last video, we already had a reward for getting a mini turbo, as this is something we obviously wanna encourage. But in this video, however, we're gonna provide an additional smaller reward for just wheeling along the straights, which should hopefully encourage it to stop hopping quite as much. Then lastly, to really drive the point home, we're going to introduce a penalty if the AI's speed drops below about 80 km an hour. This way meaning if it starts to spam hop, it will immediately be punished for its actions. With all of the reward out the way, I thought I'd give you a bit of an insight into what the AI actually sees when it's driving around the track. And here it is, this is what the AI actually sees when it drives around. However, this is scaled up to the size of your screen. But the image's resolution is what the AI actually sees, so as you can see, it is pretty low resolution. And the image is also slightly cropped as well, as the very corners of the screen don't really give much information, so there's not really much point in including them in the limited number of pixels that AI has. If you want to know what this looks like not scaled up to the size of your screen, here it is. And as you can see, the image is really tiny, so the AI really doesn't have a whole lot to work off of, but AIs really struggle with big images, which is why this is pretty much a necessity. And lastly, as motion is a pretty important thing to understand when playing a game like Mario Kart, we don't just give it a single frame, we actually give it the last four consecutive frames, which I'll show you now on screen. This allows the AI to figure out what's going on in the recent events and roughly work out what to do next. Now that we've finished talking about the inputs to the AI, Let's talk about the actions that AI can actually take a little bit. In my other Mario Kart videos, the AI has had five different actions it can do. These include hard drifting left, soft drifting left, hard drifting right, soft drifting right, and then just wheeling and going straight forward. One common theory behind the hopping in the last video was that the AI was trying to straighten up but couldn't because it didn't really have an action to allow this. So one thing that's going to be added in this video is that AI is able to wheelie and just turn left or turn right, allowing it to slightly nudge its direction a little bit so that it can line up a lot easier. One more thing I wanted to show you in this video was how the AI is kind of working and even potentially when the AI is playing, I wanted to be able to show you what the AI was kind of thinking. Sadly, however, this isn't quite as simple as it might seem. You may have seen other videos with neural networks that look similar to what's on screen now, but despite what the thumbnail of this video showed you, my AI doesn't actually look like this, in fact it looks more like this. The neural network from the last image is what's called a dense neural network, and this is what's at the end of my neural network, however before that I have a few extra things called convolutional layers. These layers are used when an AI is looking at an image as an input as these layers are specially designed to be able to pick certain things out of images, like edges and shapes and those kind of things, hence why they're very useful to an AI looking at a picture of Mario Kart. The output of these layers is then fed into a standard dense neural network, however probably not quite like what you've seen. So the neural network I showed before had about 5 neurons in each hidden layer, 
However, that's not quite as many as the AI I'm using. The AI I'm using actually has 512 neurons in each layer, which is why I'm not really able to put this on screen and show you what's going on. So even though I can't show this whole neural network on screen at once, I am going to do the next best thing, which is just show the neural network's output. This is on screen now, and this allows you to see exactly what the AI is thinking about each action it's able to take. Currently this is just showing some random values, but when the AI is racing, these are going to be the values that AI predicts for each of the actions it has. You can see the actions labelled down the bottom. In order to make the text fit a bit more nicely on the screen though, I decided to abbreviate some of the actions. For example, hard left became h left, and soft left became s left. Wheelie left also became w left, and then I've got the same for all of the actions on the right, as well as just the standard straightforward in the middle. To make this a little easier to see, I've also highlighted the action that AI chose in gold. Furthermore, I've also made the rest of the actions blue, unless the AI thinks it's going to die. If ever the AI has an evaluation that thinks it's going to die from a given action, it will go red, as you can see for some of the actions which have really low evaluations. Anyway, with all of that out the way, it's about time we finally get into the training and you'll be able to see those action evaluations on screen in the corner.
So sadly, this AI didn't achieve exactly what I'd hoped it had. However, I'm still pretty happy with the outcome of this project, as I learned a lot. Being able to see what the AI thought of the different actions provided some really helpful insight, as well as some of the definite problems with what I've currently been doing. The main thing I learned that a lot of you probably noticed was that the AI was actually capping out the maximum output it can. The AI's output is limited between 0 and 13, so it actually can't predict values outside of this range. Normally this isn't a problem, since it's rare that any time it does need to actually output some of these values. However, it become quite a problem at certain parts of the track. The root cause behind this problem is that in Mario Kart, the checkpoints aren't evenly spaced out. This means that some parts of the track may have very few and some parts have a lot. As I was using these checkpoints as a reward, it meant that some points of the track gave huge rewards, whereas some gave relatively small amounts. This caused a problem when the AI's predictions of some points of the track would be so high that it would cap out all of the actions, thinking all of them would give the maximum possible amount. This meant that the AI then can't actually learn which actions are better, so it just thinks that all of the actions are as good as they can be. An even further extension of this problem was that the AI can't use what it learned on one part of the track to apply to another part. For example, the straight at the start of the course didn't provide that much reward. However, as it went along that straight, we saw all of the actions increase in their predicted reward because there was more checkpoints. This means that the reward is really different throughout all the points in the track, so it can't generalize its knowledge from one point to another. Sadly, that's all for this video. However, it does mean that this is definitely going to get a part two and we're going to look through some of these issues and see how we can solve them. Lastly, we are right on the verge of a thousand subscribers. So if you like what I do here, please be sure to hit that subscribe button as it will help me out a lot. And I'll see you in the next video.